Remember a couple months back when Intamin came out their version of a single rail track and we all thought, okay, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. RMC really kicked things off with that single rail concept and clearly those are starting to become more and more popular. But an Intamin version, definitely intriguing, but I don't think any of us expected to see one so soon. But here we are, November 2020, and we have an announcement from Luna Park, Sydney, Australia, that they will be receiving the first ever Intamin Hot Racer roller coaster, aka an Intamin single rail. And man, did that come out of nowhere. If you're unfamiliar with this park, it's actually quite old. They've been operating since 1935, but currently they only have one roller coaster, a wooden wild mouse, which in of itself is very unique. But the park has had a history of past attractions. For a while, their most notable coaster was a custom Camaro looper called Big Dipper. That closed in 2001, but it appears that Luna Park is ready for their next big expansion, and they're going to be paying homage to Big Dipper by calling this new roller coaster as well Big Dipper. This ride will be one of three new roller coasters making its debut and a total of nine new attractions, all crammed into this one tiny area, which makes things even more impressive. Also among the lineup appear to be a Gerslauer family coaster, shuttle coaster in the style of Rewind Racers, might be an exact clone of it, a small kitty coaster, looks like there'll be a giant frisbee, and I'm sure a couple other smaller rides. And let me just say, the mock-up animations for this make it all look very impressive. I love how they've managed to squeeze everything in here. This park runs up against the water, so they're very tight on space. Plus, they're working around existing buildings. So the fact that they're able to fit in not only a thrilling attraction, but multiple roller coasters in general is just fantastic. But let's talk about this specific ride. This, of course, will be the headlining attraction. We got an off-ride animation as well as a POV and a couple of stats. The big key features here are two launches. One of them is being referred to as a boost. It's kind of one of those rolling launches. We have a non-inverting loop, a sidewinder, corkscrew, couple different airtime hills. Max speed is just over 44 miles per hour. Your first launch out of the gate is gonna get you up to 31 miles per hour and then you boost to your max speed of 44. So it's not terribly fast. I mean, let's compare that to the Raptors. Their max speed is 52 miles per hour, at least with the prototype. Jersey Devil will be hitting 58. Wonder Woman has a max height of 113 feet. To my knowledge, a height has not been released for this ride, though it appears that the highest point will be that non-inverting loop. Bottom line is this ride is gonna be quite Quite a bit smaller. Even though Big Dipper, relatively speaking, will be compact, I don't think it's going to be quite as compact as the two Raptors that we currently have. Frankly, the biggest takeaway for me is how Intamin managed to squeeze a ride in this location. Look at where the station and the beginning and the end of this coaster is. It's on top of a building. I mean, some of the track is physically sticking out over the pathway. Look at how weird these supports are. Guests walking by are actually gonna be able to look up and see the underside of this track as the coaster is taking that turn into the station. That's insane. One more difference between Big Dipper and the other standard Raptors is this one will have a seven car train. So yes, an even lower capacity than the Raptors have. I'm not too familiar with Loon Park's numbers. I don't know how busy this place gets, but seeing as we don't know how many trains they're gonna be able to run on this thing, it's impossible to predict throughput. If I had to take a guess, I would say they'll have three trains on it. Doesn't mean they'll run them at all times, but still, you gotta hope that they'll have fast operations on this thing. At least with the layout, I think the trick here is gonna be the pacing. That is the strongest thing about the RMC Raptors. When Wonder Woman first started testing and people saw that, they thought the footage was sped up because it did not look like a ride could actually be going that fast, but they do. And they're absolutely insane. This looks like it won't be as thrilling, which for this park's audience might be totally okay. Okay, so the pacing doesn't need to be absolutely ridiculous. When you have different manufacturers competing over getting bids for different projects, they each have their strong suits. I think we can live in a world where Intamin can have their Hot Racer single rail track and RMC can have their Raptor single rail track. Intamin's already doing something different by having it be launched. I am also not surprised that their first single rail is going overseas. RMC is still a fairly new company, so they don't have as strong of a stance overseas. They're only recently getting going in Europe, and their only ride in Asia is Hakuge. They haven't ever done anything in Australia. 
Intamin has. And just with the nature of the ride, it's going to be wildly different from anything else that those people have ever experienced. I am concerned, though, about the amount of noise this ride is going to be making. Those Raptor tracks are loud. Maybe Intamin will fill theirs with sand, but look at the proximity of this thing to that nearby complex. I hope that this doesn't cause noise complaints. We'll have to wait and see, though. As a whole, though, I think this is very exciting. Personally, I love seeing competition because what it does is it causes each company to step up their game. And I don't just mean with Intamin and RMC. Even look at the other parks in Australia. Warner Brothers came out with DC Rivals, so SeaWorld said, let's build a wooden coaster. And DreamWorld saw that and said, well, let's build a blue fire coaster. Now Luna Park is coming out with an Intamin single rail. Australia is slowly becoming a must-hit destination for theme park fans. After these three new roller coasters all coming out in a short amount of time, you can surely bet that a trip to Australia is rising on my to-do list. I'm excited for this park's future. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of all this. And of course, make sure to stay tuned for more updates here from Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.